everyone. So it's nearing the end of August, which means two things. One, it's back to school season or back to Zoom season, I guess this year. And two, last time this year, I was stressing out trying to figure out what I was going to write for my Common App essay. And it will surprise, I guess, no one that it ended up partially being about books. So I thought I would take this little stress anniversary <laughs> and use it as something I could use to talk about books with. Again, wow, how surprising. <laughs> I'm also going to be sharing a couple of final words of advice for anyone who's going through that process now, so if you just want to skip to that, I will put a timestamp somewhere around here. So my essay did turn out nice, I guess. I was happy with it. The places I applied to, I understand were happy with it. Got me to the Harvard, for instance, Stanford, M not MIT, because they have their own application, but I did end up talking about books on there as well. Anyway, that's enough of me talking, well, meta-talking <laughs> about what I'm going to be talking about, so let's just get into it. So the first book I mentioned was this one, Catch-22. Catch-22 follows the adventures of Yossarian and his friends, but mainly Yossarian. He is a bombardier in Japan. Um, this book has great narrative style. There's one passage in particular that I love where there's two things happening at once and you get, first you get like a page of this and a page of this and then they gradually get shorter and shorter and shorter until you have like one sentence of someone from one situation saying something and then one sentence from the other situation and I thought that was amazing. The cover of this book says, never has a book been laughed and wept over so many times. And that was very true for me. It's about World War II and like nothing makes sense in a way that makes so much sense. And it's so funny and so sad. Um, it's not an easy book to get through, but it's so rewarding. And not only rewarding when you get to the end, but as you're going through it as well. Cash on Did You also got itself into the dictionary. Um, and what it means is basically, so you're sorry, it's a bombardier. And the real problem he has is it's nearing the end of World War II, so it's not the the other side, but that the military keeps increasing his um, number of required missions. So he doesn't want to fly. If he doesn't want to fly, then he's sane, so he has to fly. But if he wants to fly, then he's insane and he doesn't have to fly. He can never find a way to get out of his missions. Their captain is always like, st stressing about things like bombing patterns, how good it will look from, how good it will look in war photographs, that sort of thing. This book also got me from the first sentence. It has one of the best, <laughs> it is one of the best and most ironic first sentences in I think the history of books, which is it was love at first sight. So the second book I talked about was the Picture of Dorian Gray. This is a lot of Oscar Wilde's plays as well, but I talked about The Picture of Dorian Gray. I already, I think I already said sometime that The Picture of Dorian Gray was written at exactly the same time as The Sign of the Four. The Picture of Dorian Gray is about Dorian Gray, Basil Howard, his painter friend who paints a picture of him, and uh, Lord Henry. So Dorian, the, it turns out that for everything Dorian does, the picture will change for him. Not only as in aging, so Dorian will always be the same age and the picture will age, but also when Dorian does evil things, the picture will have that evil change in its face and Dorian will be fine. It's a very interesting book. It's a very pleasurable book. Um, at the start, there's a foreword by Oscar Wilde that says, there are no moral books and immoral books, only well-written books and badly written books. No one is as quotable as Oscar Wilde. The third book I talked about was Harry Potter. I talked about the whole series, but I brought The Prisoner of Azkaban into this video because it's my favorite book in the series. And also I love the cover of this. It was a present from one of my best friends. Harry Potter isn't what got me into reading, but I was very into it. I don't think I have to really talk about what it's about. A uh, child goes to wizarding school, combats evil, but I do think it has a lot of themes running through it that you can apply easily to real life. The way muggle-borns are treated as less than wizards, the way some people are treated as less than people, the way that 
like even within wizarding society that we regard as the good side people like werewolves and vampires have to fight so hard for their rights that exclusivity that goes along with being a pure blood um, I, th I think those are really powerful themes that can be carried over without without magic <laughs> And the reason that the third book is my favourite is that's where we get introduced to the world of the generation that came before Harry and Ron and Hermione, all of those, the, all of those friends. So like what happened with Harry's father and Snape and Lupin and Sirius Black, also we get introduced to Sirius Black. The plot's really good in this one. Also I really liked having that backstory for everything. I don't know why I just really like backstory in books, like I'd much rather have all of the excitement first and then the reason later instead of the reason first and the excitement later. So yes, that was a little bit of what I talked about. Obviously my whole essay, well I guess not so obviously, but my whole essay wasn't about all of those, but they, they were important books to me. So I shared them then and I thought I'd take an, this opportunity to share them now. If you like this kind of real life related content, then like subscribe, like, I don't know, do something that allows me to know that. <laughs> so a couple of final words of advice. I don't know why I say final words of advice, it's not like this has been an advice video, this is just like me talking about books again. Uh, but <laughs> final words of advice for anyone who's going through that now is start early and don't stress too much. I remember people telling me that and me thinking that it was the most like unvaluable advice ever, of course you're going to stress. Um, but don't stress about yourself stressing, like it's normal to be stressed during that process. And don't compare yourself with what other people are doing because everyone is applying to different places, like a different combination of places, everyone did something different during the summer, everyone has different situations, requirements. Um, so don't become a part of the bubble of like always talking about college applications it's really important to have an outlet during that year just start early and have a good work ethic about getting stuff done i guess because there's going to be a lot of little logistic things that you have to get done as well as all of the essay writing drafting stuff <laughs> so i hope you liked that video or like maybe that will be helpful for some of you and as i said if you like that like real life related content stuff then let me know and see you next time.